r slash Buena suitcase is dedicated towards a real life case surrounding the disappearance of a 5 year old boy. April 16th, 2022. An unidentified 5 year old boy was found dead in a suitcase in rural Washington County, Indiana. According to authorities, the boy was found by a mushroom hunter named Jeff Meredith near a heavily wooded area. Upon reaching the location, this is what was seen. The boy was found inside a closed hard Las Vegas designed suitcase. It was later determined that the identity of the boy was Cairo Amar Jordan. It should also be mentioned that inside the suitcase, there was a pillow and the child was trapped inside a closed black trash bag. The forensic team were able to identify the fingerprints on the trash bag. After a couple of tests, the match came back to Dejan Anderson, who is Cairo's mother. Soon after, investigators found a second fingerprint match that belonged to Don Coleman, who is a friend of Dejan. In an attempt to gather more evidence of both women, investigators dug up old social media posts and their past criminal history. Let's go back and see what led to this event. Scrolling through their previous posts, this is what was shown. It was discovered that Dejan sent a message that contained her child's name with the following phrases. I offer, reversal, spell, protection spell, activating your DNA, exorcism, and hex curse. Exactly a month later, Don Coleman posted on her Facebook account saying, I'm using my blood for this ritual. Fast forward to February 19th, 2022, Dejan would continue to post obscure messages, and this is when things really started to get concerning. Can't wait to tell my story. I've had to raise my frequency, heal myself and past lives, heal my ancestors, heal shit in the universe, heal Gaia to exorcism, a very powerful demonic force from within my son. On top of this, Dejan was charged with several traffic violations and child endangerment. It was reported that she was driving 92 miles per hour in a 60 miles per hour zone with her son in the car. You would think after this, Dejan would eventually stop, right? Well, just a couple days later, she would continue to once again post on Facebook about her son. March 15th, 2022. Stop getting caught up in the vessels of this realm. You guys get caught up with how old the body is, if they're adults and kids and etc. Don't even know if it's a full grown demon in the child body telling you what to do because you didn't choose your soul. Better start using your third eye. Dejan would once again get herself in legal trouble after she attempted to steal clothing from a Von Mar store in Louisville and would assault one of the security officers on the scene. She would flee the store and it led to a 30 mile car chase, which ended after her car ran out of gas. Now, let's look at Don Coleman. Similar to Dejan, she made numerous posts regarding soulless children and would often consider them to be some sort of avatar. The statement pretty much sums it up. Just because the avatar is of what we call a child, does not mean that it is actually a child. There are beings here that are not supposed to be here that pick avatars to hide behind to play roles, to steal energy, and to ruin lives. You better check to see if the children that you think are children actually have souls, or if they're not malevolent beings with the soul. What I've noticed about this case is how everything seems to be perfectly timed regarding both Dejan and Dawn. Just a day later when Dawn would make that post, Dejan was released from jail. She immediately posted online saying, just got out of a jail mission. Yes, had to do some healing and killing. One more post on April 15th, 2022 would be Dejan's final message. Just one day later, the body of Cairo Jordan was found in the suitcase. With both Dejan and Don being the two main alleged suspects, arrest warrants were filed. As of today, Don Coleman has been arrested, but Dejan Anderson has yet to be found. It was reported that she was last seen in the Echo Park area of Los Angeles and has a murder warrant filed under her name. The subreddit has been keeping up to date with all the news, but has stopped since there has been no update since October. Let's just hope that Cairo does get justice. Research chemicals are chemical substances used by scientists for medical and scientific research purposes. So what do you think happens when a ton of people use these chemicals and share their experiences on reddit? Well, you get this subreddit. Scrolling through the subreddit, we can see a ton of people recommending types of drugs and sharing their experiences with research chemicals. If you dive deeper, you may get trapped in the research chemicals rabbit hole. 
There's numerous posts about people getting in legal trouble for obtaining these chemicals and even announcing the deaths of individuals who have overdosed. I will say however, there are some posts that warn those about research chemicals and I'm sure that there are people who genuinely care about the safeties of others in the subreddit. This is shown through people posting about the dangers of going overboard, sharing a list of RCs that have killed people, and teaching people knowledge about research chemicals. There's even active researchers on the subreddit that inform people about the different types of research chemicals. But from what I've noticed, there's a lack of help, and there's a ton of people glorifying these drugs. Just reading some of the stories is honestly concerning to see what led people to do these drugs, and how they've been taught and led on to believe that these drugs will somehow make them feel better. What I find extremely unsettling is this specific post where a user asks if people are depressed and if people are using these drugs as a result of their depression. Scrolling through the comments, I witness a ton of struggling people who are clearly addicted. Blaming these individuals wouldn't necessarily be the best response since we don't know what caused them to do this. From what I've seen, the community is still fairly active and will likely stay like this. Despite how unsettling some of these posts are, this is just a reality for some people who experiment with drugs. r slash immobile was a community that was dedicated for anything and everything related to immobility and fetism in which users could share media and content related towards both topics. Before we look into the subreddit, we have to understand the concept of fetism according to phoebe.com. A feedy is someone who likes the idea or physical act of growing bigger, fatter, and or rounder. A feeder is someone who likes the idea of helping someone else grow bigger. There's obviously an audience for everything as a group of people may find feedies admiring in a way, which can also lead to a romantic connection between both parties of a feedy and a feeder, but it does vary. Now that we got that out of the way, we can look through the subreddit. Besides the feederism and immobile memes that were posted, a majority of the pictures consisted of women exposing their bodies and eating while doing everyday activities. Other posts were dedicated to those adoring their feedy partners. Now with these posts in mind, it brought up the question, is this some form of a fetish? While the Phoebe website makes no connection of feederism being a form of a fetish or kink, some have considered it to be a form of a fat fetish that's focused on erotic eating, feeding, and gaining weight. Looking at this article, it explains that some paraphilias are exaggerated manifestations of normative and functional preferences. There was also a study that involved 15 male and 15 female participants in which they were shown sexual, neutral, and feeding images while also listening to audio recordings of similar stories. It was noted that both men and women rated the feeding stimuli as more arousing than neutral stimuli. This was compared to mukbang videos and how people often watch these videos to help them feel connection with others when eating. Mukbang videos are now more intentional and has allowed people to make a living off it, but there have definitely been many downsides to it, which is most commonly seen in the creator Nikocado Avocado. Now, to my knowledge, I would say that it's difficult to truly determine the main motive behind the subreddit. Some may say it's a shameful fetish, while others may view it completely harmless. What do you guys think about this? As of today, the r slash immobile community has been banned. r slash sex positive homes is as stated, a place for people raising, having raised, or wanting to raise their kids in an environment that educates about sex positivity. The sub claims to be creating a healthy environment for their families around attitudes and norms around sexuality, and by promoting sexuality as a natural and healthy part of life. But just some of these posts are heavily disturbing. From discussing about open masturbation, having sex in front of family members and deeming it not a problem, being openly nude in a home setting with other family members, it really makes you question how this could be okay. There was one instance in particular where a user was asking people on the subreddit on how to convince his 12 year old son and 17 year old daughter to masturbate with him. The post has thankfully been removed and the user has since deleted his account. But here's a screenshot of his account history and just take a look at some of these questions. And if you thought that wasn't bad enough, there's even a post about incest. It was incest with my sister that led me to embrace sex positivity and install that in my children. Nothing wrong as long as everyone is consenting to it. Ultimately, there's nothing wrong with it and is a possible outcome of sex positive nudism. It could be a natural way to express affection. The only caveat would be consent. 
The power dynamics of a family can create an imbalance of power where consent isn't given, but rather imposed. As long as all people willfully consent, there's absolutely nothing wrong with it. Alright, <laughs> that's enough internet for today. After all of this, the community is still up and running. It's definitely not as active as it used to be, but I'm just struggling to comprehend how this still exists. Members of the community aren't showing explicit images and there are strict rules shown, thankfully. It's just a personal oversharing of experiences regarding sexual topics and how it's praised with others encouraging them in the comments. That's what I deem to be the most unsettling part.